Welcome to I Know a Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. So today we are going to take a few minutes, yeah, 10, 15 minutes or so here, to show you what I do when I tear down bikes. Um, here's a great example. Here's a Trek 2.3, um, probably 2009, 2008, somewhere around there. It's in really good shape. Um, you just can't really tell it's under all the dirt and so forth. So what I do first is basically I cut everything off, take it down, take the componentry off, put it in the solvent cleaner, clean it, and after that, then I reinstall everything. So first, you need to start taking things apart. So for safety, you need to put on some gloves. And uh, gloves is always good because I use some pretty harsh chemicals to uh, clean the frame. Um, you don't definitely want to get that on your skin or your eyes, that kind of thing. So the full concept is when I fix these up, I'm stripping them down to the bottom of the frame, making sure everything is completely clean, not just necessarily clean, but also inspected. And that way you really can't tell. Sometimes by looking at this particular inside and at the bottom bracket and so forth. So first, we do some, I know it seems kind of car, archaic, but I replaced all of these, so I just start cutting all the cables off. I might really use some of them, but not all of them, and getting those out of the way. Take the housing off as well on the back part. Set those aside. Take my wheel off. A quick release is a lever system. And I put it in the trailer and the, well, obviously it's in the relaxed position because I cut the cable that pulls the trailer out of the way. I take the skewer off. Cassette. Now you can see. Release the lock ring on the set. I try to always put my tools back to where they're supposed to be so I know where they're at. Fix that. So that's the set part of it. And I expect the chain, see if it has a power link on there, which this one does, which is, makes it easy to release the chain. And I take the little small parts and put them in this little whisk here so they don't get lost in the sonic cleaning. And then I'm ready to take the drillers and the brakes off. Take the little cable ends and the derailleur. You know the derailleur itself sometimes will be a little bit of caked up um, gunk on the jockey pulleys, so I like to scrape it off with a screwdriver so it cleans a little bit better. Because even with the sonic cleaner, it sometimes doesn't pop it all off. Like so. Put that in the basket to be cleaned. So it's really nice of taking these down to the frame is you can actually clean all the little nicks and crannies where you can't get to when all the pulling trees on it, um, which is pretty nice to be able to do that. And then taking all the pulling tree off and cleaning the sonic cleaner, that also cleans all the little bits inside where you can't reach for spray. This way it gives me the opportunity to, to inspect the component tree. So it is in good shape. And I do this to every one of my frames, even every one of my bikes that I get. Um, reason being, um, even though it might look like it's in immaculate shape, I still don't give the 
chance to get into the detailed look of the bike if I don't do this. Um, so for me, it's, um, so, you know, it gives me, makes me feel warm and fuzzy in the sense that it's all been inspected and cleaned, even though it might be immaculate shape, which honestly, most of the bikes that I get need a little bit of work. Um, about 80% of them I consider not safe to ride just because I've been a tech for all these years. About 8, eight to 10% of them can be rideable, but there's usually something that needs to be done. Um, I need some work at some point. There's only like 2% out there of the bikes I get that don't need anything at all. Um, but even then, I still strip it down to the frame to inspect all the parts individually to clean them, which makes it easier to clean, and as well to inspect the frame. Because you can see behind me, there's a few frames that just didn't make it that I found later, which I didn't find in the initial inspection when I picked them up. Um, which is kind of a bummer, uh, but I'd rather be the one that takes the hit on it because those frames, if they failed, or when they would fail, would actually would hurt somebody. And I'm glad to be able to prevent people from getting hurt. So that is one of the many reasons I'm doing this. Bugger. So. I usually throw away the front. I reuse the rear sometimes if it's in good shape. Cables, that is. And the tape. I pretty much replace every bike. Spar tape is, you know, this one's obviously dingy and dirty because it's white. Um, rarely I'll keep it unless it's somebody put it on brand new. Uh, the first reason, um, it's a, it's a dirty contact point. It's like sweaty hands. Like you want to be touching somebody else's sweaty hand parts. I don't think so. It's like wearing somebody else's socks, you know, that's been running. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, not something that I'd prefer. So a clean bar tape is good. Also, um, this one looks like it was done from the manufacturer, but sometimes some, when people put bar tape on themselves, um, they just don't have the experience to put it on there. So that's the reason brand new bar tape going on this guy. Okay, let's cut this side here. Get this other side of the tape off. So pretty much all parts are safe to put in the sonic cleaner. I use simple green uh, light mixture uh, to clean it. Um, that doesn't usually break down the parts for compromising the plastic bits, um, but it is a very effective cleaning. And it's also um, environmentally safer <laughs> to use. And yeah, and you're like, why are you taking the shifters off? Well. To be honest, inside here, this one's actually pretty clean. Um, but a lot of times, like gunk inside there will prevent it. Um, and, you know, these are a little bit older. And it, the Shimano uses a kind of a thicker grease. And that thicker grease cakes up over time. And it will bind those uh, little the paws in there. Um, preventing it from shifting correctly. So I like to put it in there for, you know, like about five minutes or whatever the time is. So just to kind of make sure it's all cleaned up. And I use um, a lightweight lube. It's the Triflow Super Lube. This is really good for a lot of pivot points, shifters and all that. It kind of brings everything back to life. And I uh, pre-treat this 
I use a, a cleaner to spray some of this stuff down to kind of help break down the components. And on the shifters too, spray a little degreaser in there, turn it up. And I put a little wedge in there, which is a cut housing to open it up. So the sonic cleaner can clean in there with less obstruction, like so. And that's my basket of parts to be clean. And to recap, take everything off. And after I do that, I use a, a cleaner water mix um, to wipe down the frame initially to kind of inspect to get all this gunk off. Um, I guess this is called Purple Power. I get it at your local Walmart. Um, also, you don't want this, <laughs> you don't want to breathe this, or you don't want this to get on your skin. Um, and that, that's where I can get really good into the deep nitty gritty parts and expect, make sure there's, you know, dirt is not cracks. Um, and clean off and those stubborn parts on the frame. Then I do use a, a stronger cleaner to kind of get it, but I need to be careful with this because this will um, eat the decals off on some some bikes. So I gotta be very, very careful of where you apply it, but that cleans it up. And the next step after this, which I'll do another video on a different bike, is I use the Adams Polishing products. Yeah, shameless plug. Um, I have no affiliation except for buying their products and using them. And I got a, uh, turned on to this product from a detail shop locally here, which is Friends of a Friends. Um, this is the shameless plug. It's um, their, their uh, Dent Vision. What they actually do is they do auto repair detailing um, for the outside. Um, and when I had my truck worked on, he showed me these products and gave me some samples of it. This will make a bike frame look like brand new um, and actually sometimes better than new. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't get around some of the scratches and the chips, but the rest of the frame where you want it to get it to pop, where it get that glitter out and so forth, I use the compound. If I need to really kind of clean it up and get, if it has a lot of surface scratches, if it doesn't have that, I just go directly to the polish and I use these pads that you can get as part of the kit. Um, you know, a white pad to, to, to apply it and a buffer pad to you know, buff it out. And there's a couple of little tricks on there too. So, time I'm done with the frame, strip it down, I clean it. I um, sand some of the deeper scratches so it's smoother on the clear coat. I use a compound, then a polishing. So basically, I go through the frame itself about five times. Um, while doing that, I'm also looking at all the little uh, welds and so forth and all the points where you don't see and make sure they're safe and it's, you know, bring the frame up to part of, you know, to where it can be best as a used bike. This is where the tune-up and this is where the tune-up ends and this, this is doing the frame and so forth. This is where the refurbishing kicks in. So I'm doing a lot more detailing to the bike cleaning of the wheels, cleaning of the parts. Yeah, a lot of bike shops will tune the bike, but they're not gonna clean your frame. Um, they'll wipe it down, polish it a little bit, but they don't do anything in the sense of this. Because I'm trying to bring these products out to be almost like new, um, as new as they can be for a used bike. Or so, you know, trying to take the scary out of used, one bike at a time. See you next time.